It was eight in the morning when Ophelia opened her eyes. She grabbed her phone and looked at it for a while. This should be time for work. She pulled back the covers, wanting to hurry and wash up. It took her a moment to come to her senses, and she stopped. She recalled what had happened yesterday, and only felt as if her trip to the Hoffman family home was a dream. Then she remembered Xavier appearing, and she came back to her senses. What are you standing there in a daze for? A magnetic male voice came from behind her. Ophelia turned around and saw Xavier standing in the doorway, wearing casual clothes. She looked at him blankly. She really wasn't dreaming yesterday. He came back for her. Xavier? She said faintly. There was a trace of uncertainty in Ophelia's tone. Xavier smiled. He walked up to Ophelia with his long legs. Ophelia! He startled her. Yes, she squeaked. I haven't seen you for a few days. Did, did you already forget me? He asked. Feeling the warmth of Xavier's hand on her face, Ophelia set her own on top of it and said, No. Well, since you're awake, hurry up and come have breakfast. Okay, I'll go wash up. When Ophelia walked into the dining room a few minutes later, she found a table full of food. Ophelia blinked and rubbed her eyes. What are you staring at? Sit down to eat, Xavier urged. Right. Ophelia nodded and stepped forward to pull out a chair. Have you eaten? Xavier put down the financial magazine in his hand and shook his head. No, I was waiting for you. You made... all? Ophelia didn't know what to eat first. Xavier smiled as he saw through her difficulties and immediately made the decision for her. He stretched out his hand and helped Ophelia to scoop up a bowl of porridge. Let's have some porridge first, he said. All right, she replied. Xavier didn't make a move. He only sat in his chair and watched Ophelia eat. When Ophelia was almost done eating, she realized that Xavier hadn't touched anything. Why aren't you eating? Ophelia was taking a bite out of some bread, so she couldn't speak clearly. However, Xavier heard her just fine. She smiled. I feel full just by watching you eat. Ophelia blushed and avoided Xavier's gaze. She looked at the table in a panic and poured Xavier a cup of tea. She isn't bad, Ophelia whispered. Xavier reached out his hand to take it. Thank you. You're welcome. Xavier finally made himself a small plate to eat. Ophelia noticed that Xavier didn't eat much, so she asked, Do you not like it? Xavier shook his head. No, it's fine, he said. Eating is just a way of keeping me alive. Ophelia's heart trembled. She admitted she was slightly shocked. There were many people who were so obsessed with delicious food that they traveled all over in pursuit of it. Yet, to her surprise, he'd said words like that in a very casual manner. Xavier wiped his mouth with a tissue. When he saw Ophelia's expression, his heart softened. Why did she look at him so? He hadn't seen this kind of affectionate gaze for many years, at least since his mother passed away. But today, he saw it again, on Ophelia's face. Don't look at me like that, Xavier said. He was worried that he might be forming a weak tree. Ophelia's eyes blurred. What exactly had Xavier gone through? Even eating a simple meal seemed like a luxury. What's wrong? Xavier didn't expect his words to move her so much. Ophelia reached out and took Xavier's hand. Xavier, she said. If you don't mind, I'll eat with you every day from now on. When Xavier heard such warm words, he really couldn't hold back. While Ophelia was having a headache over what breakfast item to choose next, Aiden and Nathan arrived. Xavier introduced the two men to Ophelia. This is Nathan. You've seen him before. He's the driver, Xavier said. Ophelia nodded. He was the one who'd brought her home last time, so she had a vague memory of him. Hello, I'm Ophelia. Good morning, ma'am, Nathan said. Xavier pointed to Aiden and spoke. And this is Aiden, my assistant. Of course, Xavier didn't reveal their true occupations. Firstly, he didn't want her to worry, and secondly, he was afraid that she wouldn't accept it at the stage. Ophelia nodded. Hello. Good morning, Aiden nodded. Ophelia took the business card from Xavier. Put their numbers on your phone. If you ever can't reach me, call them. All right, Ophelia nodded. Xavier continued. Eat the rest of your food. Aiden glanced at Xavier. To think that returning to New York City had such great benefits, he even prepared breakfast. As she watched Aiden and Nathan sit down to eat, Ophelia reached out her hand to grab Xavier. Xavier, I want to talk to you. Ophelia had struggled to tell Xavier about her own family. She was worried Xavier would look down on her after he found out, so she had a long conflict with her own mind. 
after what happened yesterday, she wanted to tell him everything. He was the only person she could rely on right now, and she'd always wanted to find someone to tell those trivial things that had weighed on her so heavily that she felt like she couldn't breathe. Xavier pulled Ophelia into the study. Set aside all my time for you today. Xavier led Ophelia to a chair. Ophelia watched him sit down opposite her, and suddenly felt as if he knew what she was going to say. Xavier poured a cup of tea for Ophelia. She smelled the sweet scent of jasmine flowers and was stunned at the sight of the teacup in front of her. How did Xavier know that she liked jasmine tea? Jasmine tea. Try it. Although Ophelia was puzzled, she still took a sip from her teacup. It was better than any tea she'd tasted before. She looked at the fragrant, scented tea leaves, not knowing where to start. Xavier saw through Ophelia's thoughts. She didn't know what to say. It's complicated. I don't know where to start. She paused. Xavier gave her an encouraging smile. Okay. Ophelia nodded. What was Ophelia going to tell Xavier? And would he be mad after knowing Ophelia's truth? Xavier didn't force Ophelia to say anything. He just sat by her side, waiting for her. Ophelia finally spoke after she finished her cup of tea. So, I actually married Damon for a reason. Ophelia's voice was not loud, but it was clear. Xavier already knew all of them, but he didn't interrupt Ophelia. He only listened to her quietly. Ophelia told the story of her marriage to Damon, and she told Xavier everything about her family. Xavier noticed that Ophelia had stopped, so he finally said something. Were you not treated well by the Hoffman family? Everyone in the Hoffman family has their own secret, Ophelia continued. Damon once told me that, with my weakness, I couldn't stand firm in the Hoffman family, so that was the reason they looked down on me. The emotion behind Xavier's eyes became complicated, but Ophelia accepted the truth in the future. Xavier, Damon and I were only married on paper, so we never actually had... Um, she trailed off. Ophelia felt that any man would react a certain type of way, but she felt embarrassed saying it herself. What Ophelia said had Xavier at a loss. He really is a fool. I don't mind that at all, he said. Ophelia beat her lip. She didn't expect him to be so calm. Perhaps he really didn't mind, or maybe he simply didn't have any thoughts on the topic at all. Ophelia, do you feel wronged for marrying me? Ophelia didn't think that Xavier would suddenly ask such a question, so she couldn't answer. Xavier felt sad about her silence. He seemed to have asked the wrong question. No, I, I don't feel wrong, Ophelia finally answered. Xavier was stunned. Ophelia's answer caught him off guard. Really? Yeah, Ophelia nodded seriously. I mean it. Xavier glanced at Ophelia. When she learned the truth, would she still say that? Aiden knocked on the door. Sir, he said. Come in, Xavier replied. Aiden opened the door and nodded at Xavier. Nick is here, he advised. Ophelia knew that Xavier was busy, so she stood up quickly and said, uh, I'll go. Okay, if you feel tired, then go back to sleep, he told her. When Ophelia walked into the living room, she saw a man in a suit standing there. From the looks of it, he was no ordinary person. The first time Nick saw Ophelia in person, he sized her up. Why has Xavier let her disrupt his life like this? You're Xavier's wife? Nick asked. Ophelia nodded. Hello, I'm Ophelia, she greeted. Nick. It was simple and clean. He didn't say anything after that. Just as Ophelia was about to say something, Aiden walked out. Mr. Francis, if you'd please, he advised. Of course, Nick affirmed. Nick ignored Ophelia and followed Aiden into the study. Ophelia saw that he wanted nothing to do with her, so she went back to her room. She saw a light flashing on her bedside table. It seemed that someone was calling her. Ophelia picked up her phone and saw that Richard had called her several times. What in the world happened? Ophelia didn't want to return the call, so she put the phone down. The Hill family's matters no longer had anything to do with her. Ophelia sat on the edge of her bed, quietly looking out the window. It was chaotic outside. But there was quiet in this house. Ophelia didn't want to use her phone to read the news online. It was rare for her to avoid the headlines. Ma'am? 
Ophelia turned around and saw Aiden standing at the door. What's wrong? Ophelia stood up. Mr. Woods asked me to come and get you, the man said. Ophelia had a puzzled expression on her face. Isn't Xavier discussing things with Mr. Francis? He requested your presence, Aiden repeated. Ophelia nodded. All right, I'll be right there. When Ophelia walked back into the study, she saw Nick sitting opposite Xavier. However, their emotions felt unusual. Ophelia, you can report to Nick's company next Monday. Xavier spoke first. How could he know she was looking for a job? She hadn't told him. Nick stood up. Mrs. Woods, I'm in need of an advisor starting next week, he said. Oh. Ophelia had yet to recover from her shock. I'll be leaving now, Nick said coldly. Aiden saw Nick out. Ophelia looked at Xavier and asked, Is this your doing? Xavier nodded. That's right. Since you're not at Hillcrest anymore, and it just so happens that Nick's company is lacking people, you should go and try it out, he said. Not wanting to get her hopes up, Xavier continued. Look, Nick is a strict person. Just give it a try and see if you like it. Thank you, she said. Xavier gently patted Ophelia's leg. Get some good rest at home for the next few days, he said. Ophelia's eyebrows creased when she heard Xavier's words. Whenever he said something like that, she was afraid he was going on another business trip. Are you going on a business trip again? Ophelia asked in a low voice. Actually, even now, she didn't know exactly what Xavier did. He always gave people that mysterious feeling. Xavier smiled. Who told you I was going on a business trip? He asked. Hmm? Am I wrong? Ophelia had expected this. Xavier sighed. I'm staying in New York City, he admitted. Really? Ophelia's eyes lit up. Well, the company might open a branch in New York City, Xavier said. Ophelia was thrilled when she heard the news. She couldn't help but ask, Xavier, what company do you work for? Sequoia, he whispered. Ophelia searched through her mind. She seemed to have heard this name somewhere before, like a big foreign company. She didn't push the subject. She knew Xavier was an outstanding person and was likely a manager in some capacity. She had no clue that Xavier was the boss behind the Sequoia Corporation. That afternoon, as Ophelia was washing her clothes, her cell phone rang. Xavier picked up the phone. It was Richard. Before he could say a word, Richard roared. The ungrateful daughter finally answered the phone. With each disaster going on at home, do you really think you deserve to be a member of our Hill family? Xavier frowned. How did this fool come to have a family in the first place? Don't think that just because you answered the phone that everything is fine and you can hide from this, Richard continued brashly. Ophelia's father certainly hadn't expected the voice that responded. And what exactly is Mr. Hill going to do? Xavier had about enough of Ophelia's cruel father. What outcome would come from their conflict? When Richard heard Xavier's voice, he paused. Who are you? Richard asked. Xavier didn't even bother entertaining his question. You don't need to know who I am, he said. You're the man who took Ophelia away yesterday, right? What have you done to my daughter? Richard asked loudly. I'm warning you, if you dare to do anything to my daughter, you'll regret it. Xavier sneered. Mr. Hill, do you have the energy to deal with me? As far as I know, you've got a lot on your plate right now. Yet, you're dealing with the problem by calling the daughter you've driven out of the company and the family? Richard was silent. Just as Xavier was about to hang up, Richard said, Sir, you're no ordinary person. If you're interested in my daughter, we can talk. She and Damon have already divorced. If you want her, we can talk about the price. Xavier narrowed his eyes. He'd never met such a shameless person before using his daughter as a bargaining chip. But taking the chance to beat Richard down was simply a dream. What's your answer? If you don't say anything, I'll take it as you agreeing, Richard said. I'm sorry, but I don't have any money, Xavier said weakly. Richard was shocked. No money, he said. You want my daughter to be with you? I didn't expect you'd be so easy to deal with. Tell Ophelia to pick up the phone immediately, or I'll call the police. Xavier hung up the phone. After walking out of the room... Xavier called Nick. Draft a plan to purchase Hillcrest Realty for me immediately, Xavier said flatly. Xavier, 
here. Are, are you sure? Right now, Hillcrest's reputation is tanking. There's really no need for us to waste the money. He replied. The lower the reputation, the lower the budget, Xavier said. I think you've really become irrational because of Ophelia. Execute the plan. Yes, boss, Nick replied. After Ophelia picked up around the house, she saw that Xavier was about to leave. You're going out? She asked. Yes, I'll be back soon, he said. Be careful, Ophelia murmured. Xavier didn't go far, only to the mansion next door. The moment he entered, Aiden walked over. Boss, do you want Nick to purchase Hillcrest? He asked. Yep. Xavier sat in front of the screens like an emperor. Soon, the other end of the monitor connected to the international headquarters. A handsome man with green eyes and blonde hair appeared. Boss! The man greeted. Jason, report, Xavier said. Yes, sir. The two converse, focusing on their work. Jason, keep an eye on the situation. Boss, don't worry, I've got it handled, Jason said. After ending the call, Nick's resentful face appeared on the screen. Boss, he said. Plan ready? Not this fast. Nick shook his head. Then why are you calling me? Xavier asked. I received the latest news a minute ago. Andrew is also planning to acquire Hillcrest. After Xavier finished listening, he touched his chin. Andrew? Yes, I heard he went alone to find Hillcrest's few shareholders and seemed to have discussed some conditions, Nick continued. Xavier thought for a while. Well, since that's the case, we'll let them discuss it first. We can wait for the results to come out, he decided. Boss, I think it's a good thing if the Hoffman family takes Hillcrest down. As long as we take down the Hoffman family, we'll kill both entities. Xavier thought Nick's words made sense. Then we'll do as you say, he conceded. All right, he said. After finishing his work, Xavier stood up to go home. He couldn't stay for too long. He didn't feel safe leaving Ophelia alone at home. The next morning, Ophelia received a call from Elijah, hoping to meet with her. When Ophelia told Xavier about this, he didn't want her to go. Ophelia, I don't want you to contact the Hoffman family anymore, he said. Although she didn't disagree, she couldn't be so heartless towards Elijah. Xavier, you really think I shouldn't go? Ophelia asked in a low voice. Yes, Xavier nodded. Ophelia, I told you that last time. Since you and Damon are divorced, you have to let go of them. The last time you said you wanted to go back, I didn't stop you, but this time I can't help it. Xavier knew that Elijah had asked Ophelia to join him to ask her about him. He didn't want Ophelia to know his identity yet. The situation would only get worse and worse. He didn't want Ophelia to hear about his life from the Hoffman family's mouth. Ophelia understood what Xavier meant. She had married him. However, for the sake of the Hill family, she couldn't make it public. Now that the matter of the divorce had been exposed, there was no reason for her to see the Hoffman family anymore. I know, she muttered. Xavier hugged Ophelia. Thank you for understanding, he whispered. Ophelia leaned into Xavier's arms and shook her head. No, I should thank you for understanding and helping me. Xavier hugged Ophelia tightly. He felt a little guilty, but he had been waiting for this chance for 20 years. He couldn't afford to make any mistakes. Ophelia felt like Xavier was hiding something from her, but she didn't ask. He had too many secrets on him, and the closer she got, the harder it was for him. Ophelia felt faintly that there was a layer of connection between Xavier's family and the Hoffmans that was left out. Elisha had asked about Xavier on the phone. From his tone, it was not hard to tell that he was interested in her mysterious savior. Ophelia buried her head in Xavier's arms. She didn't want to make any guesses. No matter what happened, one thing wouldn't change, and that was that Xavier was her husband. When Elijah received Ophelia's call saying she couldn't come out to see him, he was upset. However, he didn't force Ophelia. He walked to the window with his cane and looked up at the sky. You must have seen all this from the sky, right? Do you also think that I deserve it? He spoke to the stars. Elijah let out a heavy sigh. It was time for him to repay the debts he owed. He called the law firm and had someone pick him up. Elijah went out to the car, and Helen immediately gave Andrew a call. Son, your grandfather is out. We should go to the law firm, she said. Is Grandpa going to change his will? He asked. It's possible. Hurry up and go take a look with your dad, Helen instructed. All right, he confirmed. Helen gripped her phone tightly. Was this old man really planning to give everything in the Hoffman family to that outsider? If that was the case, she couldn't sit around and wait. 
He had to make the first move. She couldn't let anyone else have possession of the Hoffman family. All of this belonged to her son. Helen thought about it for a moment before giving Ophelia a call. Helen, indeed, did not want to lose this precious opportunity. What cunning plan was cooking in Helen's mind? Ophelia hadn't expected to receive a call from Helen. Hi, she answered hesitantly. Let's meet to have a chat, if you're free, Helen said. Ophelia thought Helen wanted to talk about Damon, so she paused. She'd promised Xavier that she would remove herself from matters of Hoffman family. However, she still agreed to meet up with Helen. Why aren't you sleeping? When Xavier finished his shower, he found Ophelia sitting on the bed. He walked over and sat beside Ophelia. Ophelia's heart raced. She put down her phone and was about to make up something to talk about when she saw Xavier drying his hair. Ophelia stood up and took the towel from Xavier. She gently ran the towel over his wet hair. Such a natural action made Xavier feel strange for a moment. Thank you, he murmured. Ophelia's hand froze when she heard Xavier's voice. What was she doing? Xavier reached his hand up and held Ophelia's wrist when he felt her hand stop. His blue-gray eyes revealed all. They could feel each other's breathing, and the temperature in their room seemed to rise. Ophelia felt her heartbeat racing to an unbearable level. Ophelia's face turned red as she turned her head to the other side. She was worried that she wouldn't be able to resist pouncing on Xavier. Ophelia, are you shy? He asked. Ophelia shook her head. These kinds of things were supposed to happen between husband and wife. She didn't want to reject it. She was just worried that she wouldn't do it well. After all, she had no actual experience with any man. Xavier smiled and grabbed Ophelia's chin, making her look straight at him. Ophelia, look at me, he said. Ophelia swallowed her saliva, biting down on her lip. Ophelia looked at Xavier silently and touched his face. Such a perfect husband. Was he really hers? After a while... Ophelia relaxed against him. He held her chin and turned her to face him again. He looked into her eyes and leaned in to kiss her softly. Ophelia's stomach was doing somersaults. She kissed Xavier back and found herself wanting to experience it all with him. So she let him lay her gently down on the bed and gave herself to him entirely. Afterward, Xavier held Ophelia in his arms. Although this wasn't his intention, since he had done it, he had no regrets. More importantly, he noticed one thing. He liked Ophelia more and more with each passing day. He kissed Ophelia on her forehead. Go to sleep, he whispered. That night, Ophelia and Xavier slept well. Xavier awoke to a sound outside the window, and he opened his eyes suspiciously. He saw a shadow flash past the window, and he let go of Ophelia to stand up. Xavier reached for a robe on the floor and walked to the window and closed the curtain. He turned around and looked at Ophelia, who was still sleeping, and his gaze became gentle. He walked over to tuck her in and nodded in satisfaction at the sight of her. She had really worried him last night. Even though he knew it was her first time, he still couldn't help but ask her a few times if she was all right. He knew she was tired, so he didn't wake her up. Xavier went into the bathroom to wash up. When Xavier reached the living room... Aiden was already standing there. You don't need to stay here at night, Xavier said. Aiden lowered his head. He was embarrassed. He had no intention of peeping either. Listen, boss, I, I didn't do it on purpose, and I didn't see anything. Xavier didn't probe any further. What's the news, he asked. Mr. Hoffman changed his will at the law firm yesterday. However, Andrew knew that he was doing it and followed him to the law firm, Aiden explained. Xavier frowned. He hadn't expected Elijah to do this. Continue to observe him, he instructed. Yes, sir, Aiden said. He continued. Boss, last night when you were in the shower, Helen called to ask Ophelia to meet her at three in the afternoon today. Do you think it has anything to do with the will? Helen is looking for Ophelia, Xavier pondered. Yes, Aiden answered curtly. Xavier touched his chin. We can't underestimate Helen. Let's go together this afternoon. Aiden nodded. Well, if there's nothing else, I'll, um, <clears throat> be leaving. Xavier dismissed Aiden with a wave. Why was Xavier keen on knowing about the Hoffmans? 
What kind of connection did Xavier have with the family? Ophelia slept until 11 the next morning. When her eyes opened, she realized that she wasn't wearing anything. Flashes of the night before flooded her mind all at once, and she felt her face burning up. As she bent down to pick up her clothes, Xavier's voice came from behind her. You're awake. Ophelia froze when she heard his voice. Xavier saw Ophelia's back freeze up. He walked over with a smile. Ophelia heard the sound of footsteps and quickly wrapped herself in a blanket. He couldn't help but burst out laughing. Still shy? He asked. I've already seen it all last night. It's not the same, Ophelia retorted. But when she saw Xavier's smile, she forgot everything. Xavier pulled away the blanket and picked up Ophelia in a princess's embrace. Ophelia looked over at Xavier. He really was handsome. Xavier carried Ophelia into the bathroom, put her beside the tub, and ran a hot bath. All right, take a bath first, then come out to eat, he said. Ophelia grabbed Xavier's arm to stop him. In the end, Xavier interrupted. Do you need me to help you? No, she whispered. Xavier bent down and put his head in front of Ophelia. I don't mind if we wash together, he said with a smile. No need, she said. Xavier quickly kissed Ophelia's lips. I'll go out and wait for you, he whispered. Okay, she mumbled. As Xavier closed the bathroom door, Ophelia stretched out her hand to test the temperature of the water. Temperature was indeed just right. She couldn't help but admire Xavier's consideration. She took a bath and came out wrapped in a towel. She found a new set of clothes laid out on the bed. Clothes he'd left for her fit perfectly. She walked out to the kitchen and smelled the food and felt her stomach growl. She was hit with the feeling that her life was truly wonderful. You d Ophelia looked at the dishes on the table in amazement. Sit down and eat, he urged. Ophelia couldn't believe that Xavier's culinary skills were so good. It tasted just as good as it looked. After eating... Ophelia washed the dishes. Her heart was full. Ophelia, I have something to take care of this afternoon, Xavier spoke up. Ophelia turned and saw that he had already dressed and was ready to leave. She dried her hands. Ophelia walked up to Xavier and helped him to tie his tie. Xavier had a bad taste in his mouth. Did you used to tie Damon's the same way? <laughs> no, he never wore a tie, Ophelia replied. Xavier felt a little better after hearing Ophelia's reply. From the looks of it, you don't seem to be doing it for the first time. You learned it working in a clothing store, Ophelia answered. There, all done. After helping Xavier tidy up a bit, she nodded in satisfaction. Xavier pulled Ophelia into his arms, lowered his head, and gave her a deep kiss. After a moment, Xavier let go of Ophelia in satisfaction. I'm going, he said. Ophelia took Xavier's hand. I Xavier, I'm going out this afternoon. Damon's mother said she wanted to talk to me about something. Xavier didn't say anything, but Ophelia had confessed to him. That was enough. Okay, be careful. If you need anything, give me a call. All right, Ophelia nodded. After Xavier left, Ophelia also prepared to leave. When she got to the cafe agreed upon with Helen, Ophelia found a table and sat down. Helen arrived on time. Ophelia stood up and greeted her. Mrs. Hoffman. It's strange to hear you call me that. Helen took off her sunglasses. After they had ordered, Helen was about to speak when she saw a mark on Ophelia's neck. Her relationship with that man seemed to have gone farther than they'd realized. It seems you're living quite comfortably these days, Helen said. Ophelia was taken aback, but didn't say anything. She didn't know what to say. Are you really planning to end things with Damon? Helen asked. Ophelia nodded. Damon and I decided to get divorced over a year ago. We didn't go through the formalities until last month, she explained. Helen picked up her coffee cup and took a step. It's such a pity, she said. Mrs. Hoffman, we made this decision together. Ophelia didn't want Helen to misunderstand Damon any further. Helen didn't have much else to say. What do you think about Emily, she said. Ophelia held her coffee cup. If they really love each other, I hope they can figure things out, she said. Ophelia, you know that's impossible, Helen spoke with an attitude. Emily's child can't be kept. Why? Ophelia asked. She really didn't understand. Could the Hoffman family be so cruel? 
After all, it was Damon's child. Helen's face showed no trace of pity, only dissatisfaction. She brought this upon herself. You can't be blamed on others, Helen said. Mrs. Hoffman, Emily is carrying a child of the Hoffman family in her stomach. So what if she is? Why should we have to be responsible? Helen spoke with disdain in her face. Ruth and Emily are not good people. This was them working together to trap Damon. Ophelia didn't think there was anything else for her to say. Ophelia, you should forget about the rotten matters of the Hill family. After all these years of being used, do you still want to continue living like this? Helen asked her. Ophelia looked at Helen. From the moment they'd met until now, she seemed to be talking in circles. From the looks of it, she wasn't here to talk about Damon and Emily. What else did she want to speak to her about? Helen checked her watch and decided not to wait any longer. The old man will deal with the matter between Damon and Emily, she said. Actually, there's another reason why I asked you to meet me today. Mrs. Hoffman, please speak, Ophelia said. Who was the man who took you away yesterday? Helen asked probingly. She had no clue what role Ophelia played in all of this. Ophelia glanced at Helen. From the looks of it, this was her main goal. Those were just the opening words. Mrs. Hoffman, is that important? Damon and I are divorced, so it has nothing to do with any of you, she said. When she heard Ophelia's firm tone, Helen realized that Ophelia was trying to protect the man. Are you in love? Ophelia tightened her grip. Mrs. Hoffman, she said. Everyone has their own secrets. I don't have to tell you anything. Ophelia, I know you're a sensible person. There's something I want you to consider, Damon's mother said. Helen's words had several hidden meanings. What was Helen's next move? Would Ophelia be able to protect Xavier's identity? As the conversation came to an end, Xavier walked into the coffee shop. The moment he entered, he saw Ophelia and Helen. Aiden followed behind him. Boss, where are they? He asked. Xavier nodded towards them but didn't move. Ophelia looked upset. What had Helen told her to elicit such an expression? Boss, are we going over this? Aiden was a bit confused. Why hadn't he moved? It was hard to guess what Xavier was thinking. Xavier walked to a nearby table and sat down. Aiden was confused by his actions. What was going on? At their table, Helen waited for Ophelia's reply. What was she thinking? Ophelia, have you decided yet? Helen asked. Ophelia looked at Helen. Mrs. Hoffman, I said it. I won't tell you. Ophelia, you can't have fallen for that man, right? Helen asked with a smile. That was the only reason she would want to protect that man. Ophelia didn't answer, neither denying nor confirming. Helen took it as Ophelia confirming her suspicions. I guess I was right, she said. If you gave up your marriage to Damon for him, you're smart. Because you have an important bargaining chip. Mrs. Hoffman, what do you mean? Ophelia, how much do you know about that man? He's more complicated than you think. Helen continued. Today, I want to remind you, don't lose everything in the end. Ophelia frowned. It sounded like Helen knew Xavier and even knew his identity. Mrs. Hoffman, do you know him? She asked. Helen laughed. But it was a cruel laugh. Ophelia, I can help you too, as long as you agree to one condition, she said. Ophelia felt as if she had fallen into a whirlpool full of hidden secrets, and the truth behind these secrets would apparently be a shock. Mrs. Hoffman, what do you want to help me with? Ophelia's voice was soft. Whatever it was, Helen felt that she couldn't accomplish it herself. Helen took out several files from her bag. As long as you help me too, I won't mistreat you. After all, you were my daughter-in-law, she said, laying a contract on the table. Ophelia saw the agreement being pushed in front of her and quickly moved it away. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Ophelia didn't even look at the contract, but she knew as long as she signed it, she would be betrayed one way or another. Helen hadn't expected Ophelia to refuse. This was the highest price she could offer. Do you think it's not enough money? No! Ophelia shook her head. 
I'm not a greedy person, but I have one thing to do, and that was to live up to my mother's conscience. That's what she told me. Helen placed both hands on the contract. This was how Margaret had insisted on staying involved. Even after death, she'd been holding on to her pride. It's because Ruth saw this that she wanted to kill your mother. Ophelia's pupils dilated. At that moment, her mind was blank. What? <laughs> Ophelia could barely speak over a whisper. Ophelia, you're telling me you don't know. Helen was making a big move, so she didn't believe that Ophelia could just sit and listen. Ophelia's face paled. She was still young when her mother died. She had suspected her mother's death before. She never expected it to be like this. Helen pushed the agreement towards Ophelia. Ophelia, if you sign the contract and help me get what I want, then I'll tell you the truth about your mother's death, she offered. Ophelia trembled slightly. Mrs. Hoffman, I don't believe you. Ophelia, you don't want to know about your mother because of a man you just met. Helen didn't expect Ophelia to be so ungrateful. That man isn't worth your protection. You must know that he is... Ophelia! A magnetic voice interrupted, and Ophelia looked up to see Xavier walking towards them. Tears she had been suppressing burst out in an instant. Xavier walked to Ophelia's side. What's wrong? he asked. Ophelia shook her head. She didn't want Xavier to know what just happened. Why are you here? she asked him. I had a meeting with someone here, Xavier answered. Ophelia wiped away her tears. To your work. Xavier turned around and glanced at Helen, then reached out his hand to pull Ophelia up. You go with Aiden first, he said. He'll take you home. Okay. Xavier had added it softly, though so he didn't want her to stay. What? Ophelia started to talk. Be good, Xavier urged her. When Aiden saw Xavier's expression, he immediately stepped forward and said, Miss Hill, let's go home. Ophelia looked at Xavier and left with Aiden without saying anything else. After she left, Xavier sat down in the seat that Ophelia had vacated. Helen was also surprised to see Xavier here. When she faced him, she was actually a little afraid. Xavier glanced at the contract on the table. He picked it up indifferently. Mrs. Hoffman, you need help if you're offering small rewards. It's truly rather pitiful, he said. You. Helen seized. Xavier smiled. Did I say something wrong? In my opinion, Ophelia is worth far more. Helen clenched her jaw. That boy from so long ago had grown up. She looked relaxed. She was nervous. Are you sure you want to do this? She asked him. Want to do what? Xavier asked with a smile. I'm just sitting a fact. Your methods are shameful. His comfort was written all over Helen's face. She didn't refute Xavier's words. Mrs. Hoffman, you're in too much of a hurry. If the plan isn't detailed enough, you can't just rashly make your move. Sometimes, it only makes things more difficult, Xavier explained. Helen's eyes lit up in fury. Xavier tore the contract in half, while the smile on his face gradually disappeared. Helen stood up. What are you being so arrogant for? At most, you're just an illegitimate child of the Hoffman family. Xavier's eyes iced over as he stared at Helen. Helen? My surname is not Hoffman. Please don't put that on me. My name is Xavier Woods, and I have no relationship with the Hoffman family, he said coldly. Of course, Helen didn't believe Xavier. He'd obviously come back for the Hoffman family's fortune. Xavier, you're trying to tell me that you didn't get close to Ophelia just to enter our family. You and I both know that. Why lie? Helen had spoken frankly. Xavier smiled cruelly back. Could it be that you think your years of suffering make you entitled to the entire Hoffman family inheritance? He asked. Was Xavier really an illegitimate child of the Hoffman family? If so, then things were about to get complicated. Xavier raised his head and looked around. A lot of people had already looked over when Helen suddenly stood up. Mrs. Hoffman, if you want to continue attracting attention, then you can stay standing, he said. Helen had no choice but to sit back down. Xavier, what are you trying to do? She asked him. Xavier narrowed his eyes and spoke. I hope that you won't disturb Ophelia in the future. 
Helen raised her eyebrows. She hadn't thought that he would make such a request. Ophelia had been protecting him, and now Xavier was doing the same thing. The relationship between the two of them was intriguing. Do you have some kind of trick up your sleeve? Helen wanted to go on the offensive. Xavier shook his head. I have quite a few tricks, he said. So it's unclear as to which trick Mrs. Hoffman is referring to. You do have some tricks up your sleeve to find a woman like Ophelia. The fate of all of us seems to be tied to her. She's the key. If she chooses to help someone, then everything that is happening right now might be able to be turned. Helen felt that she had hit the mark, so she went on. Do you know about Ophelia's past? Her promise to her mother on her deathbed? Xavier knew that Helen wanted to play psychological games with him, but he didn't want to waste time here with her. Mrs. Hoffman, don't be too confident in anything, Xavier replied. The old man's fortune is a dead end for you. Do you understand me? Helen bit her lip. This Xavier was impossible to deal with. He was acting like a king, looking down from a pedestal. Helen took a deep breath. Xavier, it won't be that easy for you to return to the Hoffman family, she said. I've already stated that I desire no relationship with the Hoffman, and I'm even less interested in your assets, Xavier repeated. I just want a few peaceful days. You're lying, Helen answered. I still remember the look in your eyes when you left 20 years ago. People change, Helen. She stood up. Xavier, I don't think we need to continue our discussion. Xavier also stood up. I wanted to talk about a deal with you, he said. But from the looks of it, you probably aren't interested. Xavier, what's your smoking gun? I thought you'd be interested, Xavier answered. But I don't want to talk about it today. Xavier was about to leave. Helen couldn't help but speak up. Wait a minute. Tell me your conditions. I want information on the Hill family, including the truth you mentioned regarding the death of Ophelia's mother. Xavier offered. Helen didn't expect Xavier to make such a request. What do I get in return? Property of the Hoffman family. I heard that the old man went to change his will. Xavier knew what Helen cared about the most. Helen remained silent. It seemed that Xavier was familiar with their situation. However, she wasn't sure if Xavier really didn't want it, or if he was just planning to betray her. And now, she had become his willing prey. Xavier didn't force Helen to make a decision immediately. When Helen turned to him, Xavier was already leaving. She chased after him. Xavier was already in the car. Aiden looked at Helen standing outside the car. Boss, that woman caught up. Let's go, Xavier said. Aiden didn't say much and only drove away. Xavier looked at the time and asked, Where is she? Headed back home, Aiden answered. Send someone to investigate what happened to Ophelia's mother, Xavier ordered. Yes, sir, Aiden said. In addition, the news about me and my marriage to Ophelia is still dangerous. Now is not the time to expose it. Aiden nodded and said, Yes, sir. Xavier closed his eyes. It seemed that a lot of things were about to happen, and Ophelia would be involved. Would he really be able to protect her? Xavier was conflicted now. The balance in his heart slowly started to tilt. It was the first time that Aiden had seen Xavier show such an expression. His burden was heavy. Could this Ophelia really share it with him? If Ophelia knew everything, would she still choose to stay with his boss? Aiden, drive seriously. Although Xavier's eyes were closed, he still noticed that Aiden was distracted. Sorry, boss, he mumbled. Xavier didn't answer. He closed his eyes as if he was resting or sleeping. The car stopped in front of the villa. Boss, we're here. Xavier opened his eyes. He pushed open the car door and was about to walk to the other side when he saw Ophelia sitting at the door, waiting for him. Ophelia stood up as Xavier reached her. Why aren't you inside? He asked. Ophelia reached out and took Xavier's hand. Xavier, how did not make things difficult for you, did she? Nope, he answered. Ophelia heaved a sigh of relief. Xavier, don't promise her anything because of me. It's not necessary. Xavier could tell that Ophelia was really worried about him. He put his hand on Ophelia's. Don't worry. I didn't say anything to her. I also rescheduled my appointment, so I wasn't late. Ophelia finally felt relief. She was clear about the people from the Hoffman family. She didn't want Xavier to have anything to do with them. They all seemed interested in him nonetheless. Let's go inside. You're sweating out here, 
Xavier said as he stretched out his hand to wipe the sweat from Ophelia's forehead. Ophelia took a shower before going to bed. Xavier walked into the room to find Ophelia sleeping. Xavier sat on the edge of the bed and stared at Ophelia's expression. He leaned over and kissed Ophelia. Sleep well, he whispered. Xavier closed the door to his room and prepared to take care of some work. Just as he turned on the computer, he heard the doorbell ring. Xavier turned his head and saw Aiden walk in. So, who's here? he asked. Boss, it's Damon, Aiden said flatly. Xavier retracted the hand that was placed on the keyboard. What was Damon doing here? From the looks of it, he was here for Ophelia. Boss, I'll go send him off. No need. Let him in, Xavier said. Aiden didn't think that Xavier would want to meet Damon. Yes, sir, Aiden said. Xavier cleared his desk of anything important, then pressed the button on the computer to start up the soundproofing system in the room. He didn't want Ophelia to know that he had come, nor did he want her to hear any of the conversations between him and Damon. He got up and walked out of the study. He reached the living room just in time to see Aiden bringing Damon in. Damon was indeed head over heels in love with Ophelia. What was it that Damon intended to ask Xavier? Damon saw that Xavier was wearing pajamas, and his eyes flashed with anger. Xavier ignored Damon's expression. These Hoffmans really had no poker feet. Mr. Hoffman, welcome, Xavier said. Damon walked straight to the sofa and put his feet up. Xavier frowned slightly. Aiden couldn't bear to watch any longer. Just as he moved, he was stopped by Xavier's hand. Damon revealed a look of disdain. In New York City, you're considered rookies. Xavier understood the meaning behind Damon's words. He was warning him that he knew more than he let on. It looks like Mr. Hoffman knows who I am. Nick Francis from the Sequoia Corporation. The corner of Xavier's mouth curled up. It seemed that Damon had found information regarding his house's deed. Time, Xavier used Nick's name to buy the villa. Of course, it was also to deceive people. When Aiden heard this, he held back his laughter. Damon was really stupid. Xavier walked to the sofa and sat down. He then poured a cup of tea for Damon. After all, he was still a guest. Damon picked up the teacup and took a sip. He felt that the taste of the tea was familiar. It seemed to be jasmine tea. Xavier noticed. She likes jasmine tea. Although Xavier didn't say who she was, Damon obviously knew, so he put the teacup on the table. Is Ophelia here? Damon asked directly. Xavier sipped his tea leisurely, in no hurry to answer Damon's question. Damon looked at Xavier. Tell Ophelia to come out. I'm going to take her back, Damon said forcefully. Xavier put down his teacup gently. Where do you want to take her, Mr. Hoffman? Home, of course, Damon replied. Xavier looked at Damon, different light reflecting in his blue-gray eyes. Which house will you go to? The Hill family? Or was it the gardens? Maybe your apartment? Damon frowned. It seemed that Nick also knew about him. Aiden felt that the two men were secretly competing with each other. However, he obviously felt that Xavier had won. Therefore, he didn't plan to join in on the fun. He left quietly. Xavier also noticed Aiden left. He picked up his teacup and took another sip. Mr. Hoffman, do you not like tea? I came today to take Ophelia back, Damon said. Xavier said with a smile. She's not here. Who are you fooling? She's been looking here all this time, Damon answered. He had investigated thoroughly and knew that Ophelia had moved here after their divorce. It was unknown what intentions this Nick had toward Ophelia. Xavier nodded. All right, even if Ophelia lives here, what qualifications do you have to bring her back? She doesn't seem to matter to you anymore. Damon clenched his fist. This man was annoying. Who do you think you are talking to me like that? Damon said. Xavier couldn't help but shake his head. Damon was pitiful. Adam loved him at home, and for what reason? If he'd just been himself, he'd have made some achievements by now. Normally, he didn't want to argue with Damon, and his attitude was irresistible. And today... He seemed to have crossed his line, seeing that he completely disregarded his politeness. Damon, I'll return those words to you one day, Xavier said coldly. Damon grunted. Even if you're considered the CEO of a small company, compared to the Hoffman family, you're nothing. If you don't hand over Ophelia today, your company will close its doors tomorrow. 
Xavier acted as though he heard a joke and ignored Damon's arrogant words. Ophelia won't be going anywhere with you. So you want to fight me? Whatever you want, Xavier answered. Damon stood up. The divorce between Ophelia and I hasn't been announced yet. Xavier mocked him. Ophelia doesn't owe you anything. Bother with her after getting divorced. Nick, what right do you have to fight with me for a woman? Xavier smiled. Damon, you should go back and take care of Emily first. Even if Ophelia and I are divorced, she is still my woman. Xavier's face sank. What a great ex-husband. Damon, you forced me to do this too. Xavier didn't answer his inquiry, so Damon had a proud look in his eyes. I'll take care of Emily's business, then I'll pick up Ophelia in a few days. With a cold expression, Xavier watched Damon slam the door and walk out. He narrowed his eyes. After that night, Xavier had someone post news of Damon and Ophelia's divorce, and in addition to what happened between Damon and Emily, it was widely reported by the media. Public opinion quickly became one-sided. Damon's reputation was completely ruined. Everyone finally knew the truth. Damon first messed around with his sister-in-law, and then she got pregnant. And in order to help his sister-in-law, he mercilessly divorced his wife and even kicked her out of the house. He simply wasn't a good human being. Furthermore, the rumors about Damon and other women were dug up once again, which confirmed that Damon had cheated more than once. When this news came out, the originally bright and beautiful man became scum in women's hearts. Because of this, the Hill family was also severely affected, and the Hoffman family became a hot topic after meals. The Hoffman family sank into a haze. Elijah looked at Damon, who was sitting opposite him, and shook his head helplessly. Damon, what are you going to do? He asked. Grandfather, someone must have done this on purpose. I've already sent people to investigate, Damon answered. Elijah sighed. Damon, you really disappointed Grandpa this time. Grandfather, I know I was wrong, Damon admitted. Andrew knocked on the door. Grandpa, checked. Who did it, Elijah said. The Hill family, Andrew confirmed. Elijah frowned. Richard now wants to use the media to force me to make this decision. Grandfather, I don't think that's the only thing that the Hill family needs. Andrew, do you have any suggestions? Elijah asked. Secretly purchasing Hillcrest. In any case, Hillcrest is already a problem for both internal and external parties, so this is a good opportunity. Damon interrupted Andrew. Brother, what we're doing is immoral. Andrew looked at Damon and spoke sarcastically. Oh, so it's, it's moral that the Hill family is ambushing us like this. And the incident between you and Emily, was that a moral decision on your part? Damon was speechless. His brother was right. Were the Hulk really going to secretly purchase Hillcrest? What would Ophelia do if she heard this news? When Elijah saw the two brothers arguing, his head hurt. Grandfather, what's your idea? Andrew gave the difficult problem to Elijah. Elijah had a terrible headache as he supported his head with his hands. I still don't recommend buying out Hillcrest. When Andrew heard that, his face changed. Although he was unhappy, he quickly adjusted his emotions. Damon was waiting for Elijah's words. In fact, he wanted Ophelia to come back. I heard that we can't keep Ebeli's child, Elijah said. Grandpa, yes, Mom asked the doctor. Emily received a lot of medications to save her life, and the doctor advised them not to continue with the pregnancy, Andrew answered. Elijah glanced at Damon and asked, What are your plans? Grandfather, it's impossible for Emily and me, Damon answered. When Andrew heard this, he thought it was hilarious. Impossible? You only got her pregnant. Then give them some money, Elijah said. I will not agree to Emily marrying into the Hoffman family. Andrew knew Elijah's decision on this was the same as his mother's which saved him a lot of trouble. You guys can discuss dealing with the news, Elijah answered. Also, Damon, don't worry about going into the office for a while either. Damon was shocked. He didn't expect his grandpa to deal with it this way. Andrew was happy. Time, his grandpa was finally on his side. Good. Damon's suspension was a good thing for him. It made things easier for him in the future. Andrew put on a caring expression. Damon, just listen to Grandpa. This news has a big impact on you. Although we'll clear everything up, I think you should stay at home and be safe. Damon didn't think too much about it. Brother, then I'll have to trouble you with the company's matters. I'm fine, Andrew assured him. 
Son, you're the big brother. I'll leave this to you, Elijah said. Grandfather, don't worry. Elijah waved his hand to dismiss them. I'm tired, so I want to rest for a bit. Two brothers finally walked out of Elijah's room. Andrew reached out and patted Damon's shoulder. Don't think too much, he said. Grant, did it for your own good. And if you find it difficult to deal with the Hill family, Big Brother will handle it for you. Thank you, Andrew, Damon nodded. There's no need to be courteous. This is a Big Brother's job. Go take a rest. I think you're in a bad mood, he said. Damon walked into his room, and Andrew revealed a proud smile. This time, Damon had shot himself in the foot. He turned around to look for Helen. Mom? he shouted. When Helen saw her son come in, she quickly put away a document. What's wrong? Helen reached out to grab her son's hand. Andrew sat beside Helen with a smile on his face. Grandfather let me handle this matter, and Damon was suspended. Helen's eyes flickered with disbelief. It's true, she asked. Really? Grandfather just told us personally, Andrew answered. After receiving her confirmation, Helen was also spirited. That's good, she exclaimed. However, it wouldn't take long for Helen to calm down. Why would the old man suddenly leave things to you this time? In the past, he would always make his own decisions on these matters. There shouldn't be any problems, right? Helen still felt she had to be a bit more careful. Being more cautious in everything, she did. A single mistake could lead to disaster. Andrew held Helen's hand. Mom, don't worry, it's no problem, he assured her. I don't think the old man is in good spirits. Probably because his treasure has returned, so he doesn't have the spirit to care about this anymore. Son, even if that is the case, we still have to be careful. We can't let anyone catch us. Helen didn't dare to be too optimistic, and she could not be sad about it either. Andrew nodded. Mom, I know. I've already secretly sent people to buy shares in Hillcrest. Soon the entire company will be ours. Very good. Damon also has some shares, Helen reminded him. I know. I'll try to get them. Helen's heart seemed to loosen a little. Okay. It's possible. When we get shares that Ophelia has, then we can be confident of winning. Andrew felt that his mother made sense. Mom, do you know where Ophelia is? He asked. I can talk to her about all of this. Helen shook her head. Andrew, we'll leave the shares in Ophelia's hands until the end. We can't let her know about this yet. That way, even if she doesn't hand it over in the end, we can still buy out other people's shares. Then we'll be the majority shareholder. She would have nothing to say. Okay, sounds like a plan, Andrew agreed. Helen actually still had some worries. Ophelia now had Xavier as her backing. She really didn't expect the two of them to be together. She didn't find any information about Xavier. She always felt that Xavier's purpose for coming back was definitely not simple, and she must also be well prepared. This was the only thing she was worried about. As for his request, she couldn't believe it either. Did he not want the property of the Hoffman family? Andrew frowned when he looked at Helen. Mom, what's wrong with you? Is there something else? He inquired. No, Helen shook her head. Son, you just have to trust me now. Mom, don't worry. I'll take care of things. Andrew promised. Helen let out a slight smile. All right, she relented. Mom, I want you to accompany me to the Hill family. Will you? He asked. Helen nodded. Perfect. I also wanted to go to the Hill family to see their current situation, she said. Then I'll come back later to pick you up. I'll go handle the news online first, Andrew stated. Go, she urged him. There were more news stories online as well. The Hoffman family released a message, publicly clarifying that the information leaked on the internet was not real. It also told several other pieces of information to the media. Xavier raised his eyebrows slightly when he saw the news. You want to overturn everything with a single sentence? Could it be that the truth was so easily concealed? Then, Xavier continued releasing new information. The Nielsen's were still obsessing over the fact the Hoffman family was about to move on when another explosive piece of news came out. This time, it was proof of Emily's pregnancy, and everything was clear. There was also a photo of Emily trying to force Damon into submission, news of her attempted suicide, and a few pictures of Damon and Helen in the hospital hallways. In the photo, Emily cried miserably. Damon had a merciless expression on his face. Damon and Emily really had a relationship. Two of them had conceived a child, and in the end, the Hoffman family disagreed, wanting to force Emily to end the pregnancy. When they saw this piece of news, the Hoffman and Hill families began their hunt. 
There were even some who thought that Ophelia's firing was also related to this matter. Andrew frowned as he watched the news. He originally wanted to put on an act, but the more he played, the more intense it became. He actually got caught in one of those photos that made Emily's situation public. Who exactly was behind all of this cyber violence? Andrew sat in his office and looked at the uncontrollable situation. Chaos on such a large scale had never happened before. These people had the Hoffman family comfortably in their crosshairs. Have you found out who's behind this yet? Andrew looked at his assistant, Hunter. Hunter shook his head. Director Hoffman, not yet. The information seemed to have appeared out of thin air. Even the IP address was untraceable. Nothing could be found, he said. Don't tell me they can hear out of thin air. Andrew was angry. He didn't believe that there was truly nothing to be done. This was the first time Hunter had seen Andrew so anxious and helpless. Director Hoffman, he said, I've increased the priority of all our digital analysts. I believe that there will be news soon. Good, Andrew nodded. You can leave. After Hunter left, Andrew gave Helen a call. Mom, I haven't finished dealing with the situation over here, he said as soon as he picked up. I've already seen the news online, she said. Helen also felt that it wasn't a simple case of gossip, but rather a provocation towards their family specifically. Mom, wait for me at home, Andrew said. Sure, you go ahead. Helen also left Andrew to deal with the situation. Helen soon thought of someone. Could he be the one who did this? She wondered if Xavier might have a part to play in all of her family's troubles. After they'd met, Helen had sent someone to investigate him, but nothing came of it. This situation was too strange. Xavier must have come back with something more than just words. She would not believe what he said that day. Considering the circumstances under which his mother was kicked out of the Hoffman family, or even her miserable death, she already understood. How could he simply not care about the property? Could it be that he had another goal besides obtaining the Hoffman family fortune? Helen clenched her fist. She didn't want to make any more guesses. What she wanted was the deed to all of the family's property. Other grudges and gossip had nothing to do with her. While Andrew was in a panic, the Hill family took the chance to cause trouble. Richard also thought to issue a statement in his own name. The content of the statement was similar to what was revealed online, saying that his youngest daughter was indeed pregnant. But in the end, the Hoffman family didn't want to admit it, and even forced his daughter to throw the child away. At the end of the announcement, Richard even boasted that his eldest daughter and Damon had divorced a year ago, so Emily was no mistress. This declaration completely enraged the Hoffman family. Robert came home with Richard's statement and dropped it on the table. How are you going to settle this? He shouted at his son. It was the first time that Robert had gotten this angry at Damon. How can you have anything to do with such a woman? Andrew held his head with one hand and checked to see if the analysts had found anything. But there was nothing. It was enough to shock him. Now Richard actually dared to openly challenge them. He was courting death. Damon was silent the whole time. He never expected things to turn out like this. Dad, blame Damon. He never wanted any of this to happen. If you want to blame someone, you should blame your family and those two evil women who saved us. Madeline spoke up for Damon. Helen glanced at Damon. She wasn't in a good mood either. If he wanted to play around with women, she had no objection. This time, he had brought the drama back to their doorstep. Why did he have to deal with trash like Emily Hill? This time, he was really going blind. I'm sorry, Damon said. This is not time to apologize, Robert interrupted. We have to find a way to solve the problem. Since Richard is playing it like this, then don't blame us for being impolite. Father, I think we should teach the Hill family a lesson, Andrew said. Yes, Robert nodded, agreeing with Andrew's thoughts. Andrew grew excited. With his father's approval and help, it would be easy for them to deal with it together. If anything happened, with his father behind him, they would be fine. Helen secretly gave her son a look of affirmation, indicating he had done well. Helen looked at Damon again and suddenly thought of someone. New York City's mayor was Damon's biological father. He should be able to help out no matter what. The Hoffman family had raised his son for 28 years. Robert, aren't you familiar with Mayor Quinlan? 
we're old friends, so it shouldn't be difficult for you to get him to help out with this, right? Helen asked. Robert understood what she meant. He'd forgotten about Tyler's involvement. Thank you for the reminder, he said to her. I'll call him right away. Damon and the rest had only found out about the relationship between the Hoffman family and the mayor this second. Mom, we have a relationship with Tyler Quinlan? Why haven't we heard you mention it before? Andrew's face was full of excitement as he asked. He never thought that the Hoffman family had such power behind him. Helen nodded. Wasn't she supposed to keep a low profile? A long time ago, your father helped Tyler out, and they got to know each other, he explained. This is too convenient. Andrew said. He felt like a pie had fallen from the sky. Madeline also said, Mom, you told us earlier. You can't so much. Helen looked at Damon. When it's time to keep a low profile, we keep a low profile, she muttered. You and Dad are too secretive, Damon said quietly. Robert soon reached an agreement with Tyler, and they decided to put pressure on Richard. Dear, I need you to head to the Hill family home tomorrow, Robert looked at Helen and said. Of course, she agreed. With regards to the Hill family, it was about time to make an understanding between the two. The next morning, Richard received a call from the company while he was waiting to go to Hillcrest for some business. The tax bureau had come to the company early in the morning to investigate, saying there was tax evasion being committed within Hillcrest, and that some important assets of the company had already been sealed off. To Richard, this was out of the blue. It seemed like he really did something he shouldn't have. He knew he shouldn't have listened to Ruth yesterday. She'd said that public opinion favored the Hill family right now, so he should give a proper counterattack. The result was good. Now that the counterattack had failed, he had blown up in his face, potentially burning down Hillcrest along with him. He realized he was a fool for openly provoking the Hoffman family. He overestimated his own strength and influence. Sir? Mrs. Hoffman is here, a maid announced. Richard's face paled. She really came, he whispered. When Ruth heard that Helen had arrived, she walked out of the room with a complacent expression on her face. No matter what, she would fight for her daughter today. The moment Ruth walked into the living room, she saw Helen entering. Mrs. Hoffman must have come so early because she has urgent matters to discuss. Right. Ruth spoke first. Helen doing at the Hill House so early in the morning. Helen didn't answer Ruth immediately. Instead, she walked to the sofa and sat down. Ruth felt ignored. She was furious that this old woman would dare to be so arrogant even now. She would regret it soon enough. She walked over to Richard's side and sat down. Helen took out a document from her bag. This is the declaration Mr. Hill gave our family, and it's going to be returned to you. Ruth was shocked. Mrs. Hoffman, what do you mean by that? Helen laughed lightly. Mrs. Walters, don't you understand? From the look on Ruth's face, Helen could tell that she still didn't know what happened to Hillcrest. She looked at Richard, who sat there, thoroughly overwhelmed. I think Mr. Hill should understand what I mean. Richard didn't dare to reply. He felt that no matter what he said, he wouldn't be able to turn the situation around. What do you mean? asked Ruth, slightly disturbed by the calm expression on Helen's face. Helen smiled and asked Richard again. Mr. Hill, you do understand what I mean, don't you? Mrs. Hoffman, please show some mercy, asked Richard in a pleading tone. Helen knew that Richard didn't have the guts to do anything. Whatever he believed himself to be capable of was only possible due to Ruth. When she heard Richard begging, Ruth hit him angrily. Richard, what's wrong with you? Sit with me now. Shut up! Richard scolded Ruth for once speaking his mind. This woman was nearly the death of him. Helen then took out a document from her bag and handed it to Richard. Mr. Hill, if you find no objection to this agreement, then please sign it at the end. Richard opened it and took a look unable to shake off the feeling of trepidation. A few words popped up in his cursory glance. Among them was the phrase, Passage of Equity. You! exclaimed Richard. He looked furious. But Helen didn't bat an eyelid. Right now, this is the only way to save Hillcrest, unless you want it to fall into someone else's hands. 
she said calmly as she sipped her tea. Ruth also looked the document over and was shocked. The Hoffmans wanted 30% of Richard's shares. Helen, you're really asking for it, Ruth shouted, itching to go up to her and slap her. Helen put down her cup, ignoring Ruth as always. It's fine even if you don't sign. Once someone purchases Hillcrest outright, you guys will be kicked out for sure anyway. And why not? It is your own fault that Hillcrest has fallen to such a low level. Right now, the Hoffmans want to help you keep Hillcrest. That's why we only asked for a portion of the shares. Richard frowned. What Helen said wasn't wrong. Giving the shares to the Hoffmans wasn't a bad idea. After all, they were once family, and it was a fair deal. If in the future he wanted his shares back, things would be simpler. If the shares were with someone else, it might prove to be difficult to buy them back. With the current situation in Hillcrest, it was likely that many of the shareholders could no longer sit still and had already started to sell off their shares. Helen stood up. Mr. Hill, I'll give you some time to think it over. After all, if something like that happened to Hillcrest, I think a lot of people would offer to buy it for cheap. You should discuss it with them, too. She prepared to leave. Richard quickly retorted. If I sign, what will I get? Your position will not change since you are more familiar with the operations of Hillcrest. The position of general manager will be taken over by Andrew Hoffman. What? shouted Richard. He had not expected them to have such a plan. Ruth frowned as well. She couldn't believe the lengths that Helen would go to for her eldest son. This old woman really did think of everything. Why not Damon? she asked. Damon has been thrown out by the Hoffman family. What? Our old man ordered us to do this because of your precious daughter. So this is how it turned out, explained Helen. For once, anger and resentment creeping up in her voice. Ruth, too, suppressed her anger as if someone had tightened the grip on her neck. Helen continued, I can only wait two days at most. If it's not done by then, it'll be too late. Richard held the pen. There was nothing he could do now. Richard, are you crazy? exclaimed Ruth as Richard bent down to sign the document. You shot! He scolded Ruth loudly. If it weren't for you, everything wouldn't have happened today. Finally, he signed the document. Ruth was furious. Things had truly changed between her and Richard. When Helen saw Richard's signature, she let out a satisfied smile. This was the right choice. No, the wisest choice. Richard handed the signed certificate of share transfer to Helen. I still have a condition, he said, his voice controlled and level. I want Damon to become Hillcrest's vice president. Helen smiled. She wasn't in the least bit surprised. Good plan. It was as if she had already expected this to happen. Helen added, I can also get your daughter to work at Hillcrest. Do you think so? Of course, Helen said lightly. She then smiled. But I have reservations. Ruth clenched her jaw, yet again unable to say a word. She could only nod helplessly at Helen's cruel smile. What conditions? The child must be taken care of, said Helen. Ruth was shocked. No way! Ruth, you are suffocating your daughter to death. Why do you keep insisting on letting the pregnancy continue? Helen kept the documents in her bag after she finished speaking. We'll see how you respond in two days. I'll be leaving now. Once Helen left, Ruth turned to Richard in a rage. Richard, what do you mean by this? She really gave in to her demands? Richard didn't take that line down. Ruth, you fucked it up to both of us. He started pacing in front of her. How dare you? That idea of yours. Give up that guilt. Ruth slumped onto the sofa, suddenly defeated by his outburst. How did this happen? Richard didn't reply. Take Emily to surgery in the afternoon immediately. At the Riverside Villa, Xavier also received the news. Aiden stood to his side and awaited his instructions. For a long time, Xavier didn't say anything. So Aiden prompted, Xavier, what do we do now? Xavier didn't answer. He was deep in thought. I think they'll be looking for Ophelia soon. Now her shares are the key to their victory or defeat. 
Xavier, who do you think Ophelia will help? Aiden shook his head slightly. He really didn't know where Xavier got this confidence from. Ophelia was from the Hill family, so it was natural for her to want to help them. Ophelia was also once a wife in the Hoffman household. She could deal with the Heartless Hill family. She could totally stand by the Hoffmans. No matter how he looked at things, it wasn't Xavier's move. The boss had truly miscalculated at the time. Xavier returned to his villa. As soon as he entered, he smelled the fragrance from the kitchen. For the past few days, he had been eating food made by Ophelia. Although she fumbled with the recipes every day, she made a lot of effort. He walked in through the kitchen door and saw Ophelia busy preparing for dinner. He felt warmth. The warmth of finding oneself happy. Ophelia turned around just in time to see Xavier. You're back. Xavier rushed forward and hugged her. Ophelia blushed. What happened? Nothing. I just want to hug you. Xavier whispered in Ophelia's ear. She laughed. She had always pictured marriage as a limitless photo album of sweet, beautiful memories just like this one. Xavier let go of Ophelia. What did you do today? Before Ophelia could stop Xavier, he saw the printed recipe she was using to cook their dinner. She felt embarrassed. The truth was, she wasn't a very good cook. She was clumsy with the cutting board and knew barely any of the spices she used in her cooking. Things had seemed natural to her after meeting Xavier. He made it all better with his presence. Xavier picked up the printout from Ophelia. He smiled. Why don't you make something simple? Those simple things taste bland. Ophelia stepped forward and put away the recipe. Xavier picked up an apron and put it on. Let me help, he said. No need, Ophelia quickly said. You just got back. You should rest. Plus, as your wife, I think I should get you used to my cooking. When Xavier heard Ophelia refer to herself as his wife, he hesitated. Did I say something wrong? Xavier smiled and shook his head. She finally didn't reject her identity. This was good news. It meant she had accepted the fact that she was Mrs. Woods. Things from now on would be easier to deal with. There's no such rule in our family, you know, Xavier said. As a husband, I can also pamper my wife with my cooking. When Ophelia heard this, her face lit up with a brilliant smile. She jumped up and hugged Xavier. I must have done a lot of good in my last life to have met you. Xavier smiled, putting an arm around Ophelia's waist and pulling her close. Is that so? <laughs> Xavier's eyes flashed. In that case, can I ask for a reward? This time, Ophelia understood Xavier quite well. Her face flushed red as if the barrier between them had disappeared the other day. Ophelia's heart beat faster. Her whole face looked red like a ripe apple. She hesitated once, then nodded. Xavier leaned towards her and kissed Ophelia's alluring red lips without a word. Her soft lips parted slightly to invite him in. She held on tight to him and wouldn't let go. They forgot everything as they embraced and kissed each other to their heart's content. Suddenly, the lid of the soup pot was blown away. Only then did Xavier reluctantly let go of Ophelia. He extended his hand and gently wiped away the smudged lipstick at the corners of Ophelia's mouth. We can continue this later this evening, he said, as he headed back to the dinner preparation. Ophelia stood there, hand over her heart, waiting for it to stop beating so hard. She was looking at Xavier with a look of infatuation on her face. He was perfect, the man of her dreams, and he was real, and he was in front of her. She couldn't believe her luck. They had a good dinner. After the meal, Ophelia went to wash the dishes. She figured it was the least she could do since he had cooked dinner. Ophelia, shall we go for a walk later? Shh. Ophelia immediately agreed. She had lived here for a month, and yet she never went out for a walk before. When she sat down to put on her shoes, Xavier came to help her with that as well. What are you doing? I'll do that myself, she cried. But he simply smiled as he looked at her. It's normal for a husband to want to help his wife. Ophelia was truly touched. Xavier reached out his hand to Ophelia. Shall we? he asked. This time, Ophelia held Xavier's hand without hesitation. She held it tightly. The moment they left, Aiden and Nathan crept out of the shadows of the house. Aiden complained. Every day, you guys show all of this love. Are you that shameless? Shh, 
people don't know that this kind of behavior is like torture for us? Aiden, don't you think this kind of boss is better? He and his wife are good friends, so we're suffering a little less now. Aiden also felt that what Nathan said made sense. Recently, Xavier had been a little more tolerant towards them, so it was easier for them to talk. Fine, let's keep up with them, said Aiden as they headed in the direction of Xavier and Ophelia. Xavier and Ophelia walked around for a while and then came back. Xavier, I'm going for an interview in a couple of days, remember? Do you have any helpful tips for me? Xavier replied. Just remain calm. Nick will arrange everything for you. Do you think they'll like having me? I'm sure you'll charm them once you get the chance. She laughed. Thank you, Xavier. Xavier laughed again. We don't need to thank each other. When they were almost home, Ophelia's cell phone rang. She saw the caller ID and suddenly stopped walking. Even Xavier was caught off guard. He turned around and came back to put his arm around her. Then, he read the name on her phone. A Hill family call. Answer it, he said. He grit his teeth. It was finally happening. So be it. What would happen, would happen. Ophelia looked into Xavier's eyes, but saw no emotion staring back at her. She picked up the call hesitantly. Hello? It was her father. Ophelia, you finally answered the phone. His tone was not happy. It was as if he disliked having to wait this long to talk to her. Ophelia didn't reply. She waited for him to speak. Come to the company tomorrow with your share, said Richard. Ophelia's body froze. Was he going to take back her shares now? Xavier felt the change in Ophelia's temperament, and he thought he knew what it meant. Richard had made his move. Xavier put his hand on Ophelia's shoulder to comfort her. Ophelia held her phone tightly. Why? There's no reason. The shares of Hillcrest were originally given to you by me, said Richard in a very calm and casual tone. Ophelia spluttered. Those are my mother's shares. Ophelia, don't forget that your surname is Hill. I won't come. Is that so? Then you just wait and see, shouted Richard in a threatening voice. Do you think you're carefree and unburdened now just because you have a man in your life? Ophelia was pissed. How dare her father bring up Xavier like this? She looked up at her husband for a split second when her father mentioned him, and Xavier understood the look on her face. Xavier heard snippets of the conversation, especially when Richard raised his voice. Taking the phone from her, he said in a calm tone, Mr. Hill, about Hillcrest, if I remember correctly, you said you didn't have a daughter. So Hillcrest is not Ophelia's responsibility anymore. Whatever's happening with Hillcrest is your problem, not hers. Please don't bother her again. Who are you to have a say in my affairs? shouted Richard. Xavier smirked. You'll find out soon enough. Saying this, he hung up the phone. Ophelia heard what Richard said to Xavier. I'm sorry, she said. Xavier hugged Ophelia. No apologies between us. Xavier continued walking with Ophelia in his arms, but Ophelia still couldn't figure out what Richard was up to. Xavier, why would my father suddenly want my shares? She asked. Xavier smiled. Didn't you watch the news today? Ophelia shook her head. She had been studying the recipe and preparing all day, so she didn't have time to look at anything else. Xavier continued, When we get home, you can go take a look when you have some time. Ophelia felt a little confused. Xavier obviously knew about the news, so why didn't he tell her directly? There are some things you should find and understand on your own. Xavier answered her unvoiced thoughts. Ophelia stared quietly at Xavier. How did you know what he was thinking? Aren't we connected body and soul? Xavier asked, laughing. Once home, Ophelia turned on her computer and searched for the day's news. As expected, she immediately found news regarding Hillcrest. Once she had finished reading, Ophelia leaned back in her chair. Her father only thought of her when he was faced with a crisis like this. He was definitely going to steal her shares back. Xavier walked into the room. Ophelia, I'm going to take a bath. Ophelia nodded. Her gaze was still fixated on the computer screen. Xavier walked to her side and saw the news on the monitor. He switched the screen off. Stop looking at that, he said. Ophelia seemed concerned, so she asked, 
Xavier, what do you think I should do? Xavier leaned on the desk and looked at Ophelia. His eyes narrowed. You want my honest opinion? Yes, of course. Ophelia nodded. After all, half of my mother's credit goes to Hillcrest. And you want to preserve Hillcrest? Asked Xavier. Ophelia thought for a moment before finally nodding. Xavier sighed. I don't recommend you save Hillcrest now. It wouldn't be wise. Ophelia blinked. She was shocked. She didn't know why she wanted to believe Xavier. Why? As far as I know, half of Richard's shares have already been poached, and he's lost his position as the majority shareholder of Hillcrest. Other shareholders also sold their shares, and another company is planning to directly purchase Hillcrest. Ophelia was stunned, as she did not expect Xavier to know all of this. She had heard Connor talk about this before. However, he said that he didn't expect Richard's share to be divided. Ophelia raised her eyebrows. Who took my father's share? She asked. The Hoffmans. Ophelia's eyes widened. The Hoffmans? How could they do that? Of course, Xavier couldn't tell Ophelia the truth. Instead, he said, I'm not sure, but I heard that Andrew Hoffman will be the general manager for Hillcrest once everything is finalized. Ophelia's face paled. How could this happen? She trusted the Hoffmans to make a mess of things as they usually did. Why were they doing this? Xavier straightened up and said seriously, All right, it's getting late. Go wash up and get ready for bed. No point worrying about things now. It's getting late. Ophelia still had a puzzled expression on her face. Xavier, how do you know about all of this? Xavier shrugged. News from the industry. Ophelia didn't press for more details. She said, Xavier, what do you think I should do with my shares? Xavier smiled. She really intended to rely on him as much as possible. Well, since Richard has already called you now, the Hoffmans will definitely be the next to call you up. They wouldn't miss that chance. Ophelia shook her head with certainty. No, they know about Damon and my divorce. There's no chance they'd call me. Bother. Xavier was not convinced. Perhaps. Let's see. Sure enough, when Ophelia was about to take her shower, her phone rang. It was Andrew Hoffman. Ophelia clutched her phone as she looked at Xavier, who was calmly leaning on the bed and reading the report. Once again, she pictured him as a god with prophetic powers. She couldn't believe it. Someone from the Hoffman family had called. She picked up the call. Hello? Ophelia, it's Andrew. Yes. Hi. Are you free tomorrow? I wanted to invite you to dinner. Andrew asked without a preamble. Ophelia looked at Xavier, wordlessly asking him for his opinion. In the end, Xavier only gave her a faint smile. Ophelia frowned. What did he mean by smiling like that? Finally, Ophelia decided to take matters into her own hands. My dad just called me to ask to come back to the office tomorrow, and now you're calling me. Do you both have the same reason? Ophelia asked slyly. As soon as she mentioned her father, she could hear the tension in his voice as he immediately replied. Ophelia, I think you should meet with me first, before going to your father. After all, Hillcrest is now in shambles. No sense in going back there, right? When Ophelia heard this, she finally understood what was going on. Andrew also wanted to get shares of Hillcrest from her. Or could it be that the company that wanted to buy all of Hillcrest was just Andrew? Ophelia felt a semblance of fear from this kind of awareness. If that was really the case, it was too terrifying. The Hoffmans actually wanted to swallow Hillcrest. Andrew continued, Ophelia, I hope you will consider this matter carefully. I will consider it. Ophelia felt she had become the most important chess piece in this strange game, but she also knew she played a very important role. If she stood on one side, then the other one might have a chance of winning. She couldn't help but shiver with fear. How did things turn out like this? And who knew how all of this was going to end? Andrew added. Ophelia, you're a smart person. You know what to do. The Hoffmans were kind to you too, weren't they? It would be unwise to risk everything for someone like Richard. Thank you for the reminder, Mr. Hoffman. I will consider. All right. I hope that I'll be able to hear some good news from you very soon. Ophelia ended the call and looked at Xavier. What should I do? she asked. 
Xavier put down the report he was reading and walked towards Ophelia. He said, Ask yourself, what is it that you want? Ophelia was so confused that she didn't want to think about anything else. She felt she wouldn't be able to bear the burden of this matter. She didn't want to be a pawn between both families over the matter of Hillcrest. Xavier hugged Ophelia. Don't worry, Ophelia. You have me with you now. Ophelia looked up at Xavier. He was right. It was because of him that she felt safe. Xavier, I don't think I want to get involved. Upon hearing Ophelia's reply, Xavier seemed relieved. He always felt that Ophelia might end up helping one side or the other, but hearing her choose neither party, he finally felt at ease. Are you willing to part with your shares in Hillcrest? Ophelia frowned as she bit her lips. Actually, she also thought that this plan might work. The only thing she couldn't let go of was that her mother had left these shares to her. Ophelia wasn't forced by Xavier to make this decision right away. Ophelia, there is bound to be gains and losses in this world. I think you know that too. Mom left this for me, Ophelia said mechanically. Xavier understood her. I know what you mean. But you don't want your mother's shares to fall in their hands. Isn't that so? Ophelia nodded. It's not that I don't want to. I just want to keep my mother's legacy alive. No matter if it's the Hill family or whether it's the Hoffmans. I don't want to do this. Xavier thought about it, and his eyes gleamed. I have an idea. Ophelia smiled lightly. Go ahead. Xavier leaned in and spoke in her ear. Once he was finished, he straightened his back. You can also think about it. Is this person reliable? Ophelia asked. He's my friend. Ophelia thought for a moment. Then, can I meet him first? Of course. Xavier touched Ophelia's head. If you want to, I can contact him. Yes, please. Do so. The next day, Xavier took Ophelia out to meet his friend. They drove to a cafe where they were supposed to meet. They walked into the place where they saw a man sitting in the distance with his back to the door. Xavier pulled Ophelia over. John? Hello, Xavier. John, this is Ophelia. Ophelia, this is John, Xavier said. John looked at Xavier and whispered, Girlfriend? Xavier smiled, but did not directly answer John's question. There was an ambiguous look on John's face, but he said nothing. Instead, he winked at Xavier, and they then moved on to the subject at hand. Ophelia knew from their conversations that John and Xavier were old classmates, and the two of them had been good friends for many years. John's company specialized in providing other companies with related services, such as enterprise management. Last night, Xavier's suggestion was to get Ophelia to leave the shares in her possession to a professional institution first, which would then directly authorize the shares in her hands. Ophelia thought this was a good way to keep her mother's shares and solve her dilemma easily. She stood up. Will you excuse me? I need to go to the bathroom. Once she left, John's expression changed. Boss, are there any rewards for this additional quest? Xavier raised his eyebrows. Depends on your performance. John expressed his silent protest with his eyes. He and Xavier may have been classmates at university, but in the real world, he worked for Xavier. It wasn't something he had a problem with. The salary Xavier gave him was several times more than the normal salary for a man in his position. And for the sake of the money, he endured Xavier's volatile temper. John nodded reluctantly. Sure, but who is this Ophelia anyway, and how did she get you to personally take action? Is she your girlfriend? Having worked with Xavier many years, he knew that Xavier had never been close to a woman. John and Jason, both Xavier's right-hand men, had once thought that Ella Carter would be the one who broke Xavier. Everyone knew that Ella liked Xavier, but Xavier had ignored her. However, this time he had actually taken a woman out. It was a miracle. Xavier put down the coffee in his hand. You might want to stop calling Ophelia by her first name. The smile on John's face froze on the tip of his tongue. Hmm? Mrs. Xavier Woods would be more appropriate. What? Mrs.? John looked at Xavier in disbelief. Are you saying that you and her... Xavier nodded. John slapped his forehead. Oh my god! This is such... It's 
took John several moments to calm down. He finally understood that Xavier was risking everything for his wife. Therefore, it wasn't hard to explain his actions today. Wow, you really are secretive, aren't you? John said as he gave Xavier a thumbs up. Xavier glanced at John. It's good that you know that. I think one of your former flames will cry to death, John shook his head. Who? Aren't you asking the obvious? Ella, at any rate, I already hinted at this a few times. Xavier's face sang. I have nothing to do with her. And about my marriage, remember to keep your mouth shut. All right, John nodded. Perhaps because John knew that Xavier had his own plans, he didn't continue on the topic anymore. So then, does Mrs. Woods know about your true identity? She doesn't. John sucked in a breath of cold air. Xavier was, and always would be, an enigma. The conclusion that most people drew after meeting him was that he wasn't someone ordinary people could understand at all. He probably had his own plans for whatever was happening with Ophelia. Xavier saw Ophelia come back, and he kicked John under the table. Both men straightened up and changed their expressions. John asked, Miss Hill, is there anything else you don't understand? Ophelia shook her head. Okay, John said as he pulled out a piece of paper. If you have no further questions, then please sign here. Ophelia signed her name where required. John looked at her with pity. She didn't know it yet, but she was actually transferring all of her shares to Xavier. He gave Xavier a look that said, You're really good at this. All right, let's get back, Xavier said as he stood up. When Ophelia saw Xavier like this, she suddenly felt very embarrassed. They had just only finished their business, and they were now abruptly leaving. You're rude. But then John also got up and began to pack his things. Xavier pulled Ophelia's hand, and together they walked out of the coffee shop. Where do you want to go later? I'll accompany you. Really? Ophelia blinked her eyes. Of course. Um, how about Korean food? Xavier didn't expect Ophelia to have an answer so readily. He laughed. Very well. I'd like to try out every kind of food that you enjoy. She laughed with joy. Xavier said, All right, let's go. My treat, Ophelia declared. Although Xavier wanted to refuse, he didn't. He saw Ophelia smile and gave up. If she wanted to pay, then he wasn't going to fight her. When Ophelia didn't arrive at Richard's house that morning, he exploded with anger at her audacity. He thought that Ophelia would disregard his wishes. Was she this set on seeing the end of Hillcrest? Ruth looked at the angry Richard and shouted, I already said that this Ophelia was an ingrate. And just believe me, she's doing she 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 Richard snapped back at Ruth. Don't the matter of Emily. Ruth rolled her eyes. We have an appointment for surgery tomorrow, she said. Richard simply ignored her and made his way to Hillcrest. The office had already been closed for the past few days. Looking at the company and everything else, Richard felt as if he was fighting with Margaret again. And now that he thought about it, he felt irritated. Margaret, is this my punishment? Richard walked to his seat and sat down. He sighed. Certainly this was the punishment the heavens had given him. After all, he had betrayed Margaret. He thought that things would be smooth sailing after that, but things were unpredictable. He had indeed fulfilled the terms, and it was not as if he had not reported the truth at the time. Margaret, I was wrong. Please save Hillcrest. However, the only noise beside him were the curtains lifting in the wind. Andrew had been waiting for Ophelia all morning, but in the end, no one had come. Could it be that she was still willing to help Richard? But when he inquired, Andrew received the news that Ophelia hadn't gone to Hillcrest either. So she had chosen neither side. In other words, she chose to be neutral. It was not directly detrimental to him, because he had now become the largest shareholder at Hillcrest. However, he still wasn't at ease. Ophelia's 40% stake was still a bomb. He sent someone to find Ophelia. He needed to have a good talk with her. Ophelia and Xavier stepped out of the restaurant, eager to go home. She was reporting to the new company tomorrow, and had to be there early, no matter what. Xavier looked at her sideways as they walked to the car. From the looks of it, you seem to be a bit nervous. Do I? said Ophelia wryly. Relax, you'll be fine, Xavier assured her with a smile. When she was about to get into the car, she saw Damon and Madeline step out of a bar. She looked at the Hoffman siblings, speechless and unmoving. 
Madeline was the first to see Ophelia, and she also saw the man standing next to her. Oh, yeah, she explained. Mrs. Wilson, what's the matter? Ophelia asked formally. Madeline was having problems helping Damon walk because he was drunk. This man, Madeline asked her, pointing at Xavier. Damon drunkenly spoke up. Look at how I drank for you. Ophelia glanced at Damon and then back at Madeline. Maybe you should hurry up and take him back. Ophelia, I really didn't expect you to be so heartless. Madeline was truly angry. Ophelia felt a little miserable. Madeline, what do you expect me to do? Dick and I are divorced because we weren't suitable for each other. She moved on. She can't you all. Madeline had nothing to say. She just watched as Xavier pulled Ophelia away. At this moment, Damon opened his eyes. Let's go home. Damon, are you really just going to let her go? I let's go home, repeated Damon. However, his gaze was on Xavier holding Ophelia's hand. What a stab in the heart. Once, he too had held Ophelia's hand this way. Those times seemed to be a long, long ways away. When Damon and Madeline finally reached home, they could hear Robert and Andrew all the way from the street. I didn't expect Ophelia to be so ruthless this time, Robert said angrily. I think we're all underestimating her. When Damon heard this, he immediately asked, What's wrong? Robert looked at Damon, who had walked in seeming very angry. Damon staggered a few steps forward. What happened? he asked Damon. Helen smelled the alcohol on Damon and quickly covered her nose. Oh, Damon, you went drinking again. Yes. Madeline also walked over. Mom, don't blame him. Helen couldn't understand how Madeline got on so well with Damon when she couldn't do that with Andrew. Helen frowned. Pull yourself together if you want people to stop blaming you for everything. What would happen if every day I got drunk like an idiot and rolled about town? Do you think that would make you look? Damon had a terrible headache, so he closed his eyes. But Helen was right. He also knew that this incident had a huge impact on the family. But what could he do? Things weren't under control right now. This is why we're losing to an upstart like Ophelia, Robert said angrily. Dang, I'm sorry, I was wrong, cried Damon. Seeing Damon like this, Robert regretted allowing him back into the family. He sighed. He needed to think of a way to get Tyler to help Damon. Help him see reason. Right now, there was going to be a tough battle at the Hoffmans, so no matter what, nothing could go wrong. When Helen saw Robert's expression, she immediately had an idea. Robert, now isn't the time to fight with Damon. I think it's time for us to unite, she said. Robert was slightly surprised. He never expected Helen to agree to let Damon stay. This seemed different from what he had originally thought. What happened to her? Don't look at me like that, countered Helen. I feel there should be no more problems within our family. Otherwise, our position in New York will change as well. Carefulness is the name of the game. Richard will not care about anything for the next few days. So we need to be quick and quiet. If we get into any more trouble, it could impact the family in a big way. Helen's words made Robert think what she was saying was reasonable. If Damon was kicked out of the Hoffman family at this time, others might catch hold of him. Andrew looked towards Helen. He was definitely going to stand on the same side as his mother. Dad, I also feel that Mom's words make sense. But now Ophelia doesn't know how to appreciate favors, exclaimed Robert. Madeline listened in a daze, unable to make any sense of the conversation. She stood up. Yeah, I'm going back to my room. She didn't want to be involved in these family matters any more than she needed to be. Damon opened his eyes. He seemed to have become more clear-headed. What happened with Ophelia? Andrew sneered. She seems quite capable now. She actually sold her own shares, Andrew answered. When Damon heard this news, he also felt that it was unbelievable. She always cherished these shares. Why did she suddenly sell them? Andrew continued. She's being very smart right now. After divorcing you, she wanted to forget her relationship with both of us. Damon ignored this aside. To whom did she sell? He asked. I'm not sure. It seems to be a mysterious buyer, Andrew answered. 
I hope that mysterious man doesn't come out and cause trouble. Helen naturally felt suspicious of Xavier. Though few could possibly have given her shares to him, their relationship wasn't easy to guess on. They were secretive. However, Helen reasoned, Xavier had no reason to help Ophelia out at all. Or was there some unspeakable relationship between them that compelled him to help her? It was something Helen couldn't figure out. Meanwhile, even thinking about the situation was making Damon irritated. The nature of Ophelia's relationship with that man. Robert saw the expression on Helen's face and asked, What's the matter? Helen came back to her senses. I'm sorry, I'm just fine. Damon supported his head with his hands. Ophelia must have been cheated by that Nick guy. Hearing Damon's words, the three of them looked at him. Nick? asked Helen. Yes! Damon thought back to the day when they confronted each other. Nick gave him an unfathomable feeling. He must have persuaded Ophelia to sell her shares. Otherwise, Ophelia certainly wouldn't have done such a thing, as the shares had originally belonged to her mother. Helen felt a little dizzy from Damon's words. Could it be Ophelia had another man? Apart from Xavier. Andrew suddenly had a bad feeling. Could it be that Damon knew something he didn't? If that was the case, he was in danger. He quickly looked at Helen. Helen shook her head slightly, as if telling him not to be nervous. Robert looked at Damon. Was he talking nonsense after drinking? This Nick. Or was this an alias of Xavier's? Maybe he had used a fake identity to get close to Ophelia. The more Robert thought about it, the more troubled he became. Who's this Nick? Helen still felt that it would be irritating to guess the answer to her question. Damon pressed his hands against his temple. That man that took Ophelia away the other day. Helen heaved a sigh of relief. It seemed that Damon was still talking about Xavier. He told you his name was Nick? Damon shook his head. No, but I found out the villa he lives in and the house he has is registered to someone named Nick. This news made Helen's eyes light up. So Xavier only used Nick's name to deal with matters. If that were the case, she would just have to check on Nick. Damon had finally helped the family out for once. Are you sure? Helen asked to confirm. Damon nodded. I wanted to see him and I talked to him face to face. Andrew didn't expect Damon to be bold enough to go directly to Xavier. Even Robert was surprised. What are you going to do with him? Get rid of him and bring Ophelia back! Helen really wanted to roll her eyes when she heard Damon's words. What else did you say to him? Nothing much. We had a short conversation, said Damon. He staggered to his feet. I feel that this Nick isn't so simple. I think he deceived Ophelia somehow. With that, he staggered upstairs to his room. The other three looked at each other in silence. The atmosphere in the living room suddenly turned strange. Robert opened his mouth first. It can't be that Xavier really said something to Damon, right? Helen shook her head. I don't think so. Mom, we can't ignore Damon now, said Andrew. Although Grandpa won't let him go back to the company, we still have to be on our guard about him colluding with Xavier in private. Andrew didn't want the property that he was about to acquire to be robbed by outsiders. Fortunately, Helen agreed with him. Of course, she was clear about this. Maybe Xavier would actually join forces with Damon, an outsider who covet Hoffman's properties. How should we do this? asked Helen. Robert hesitated for a moment before saying, I'll send someone to monitor Xavier. When he comes back, it's impossible for him not to make a move. When he does, we'll be ready. Sure, Helen nodded. With Robert leading the way at the front, she could also concentrate on Xavier. Andrew was very unhappy, now that he knew that Xavier had actually come into contact with Xavier first. He squeezed his hands, his anger rising. Andrew also sent a message to Richard, who nearly vomited blood when he received the news. Ophelia, he shouted. You're really good. Ruth walked Emily out of the room and saw Richard pressing his hand to his chest. Ruth got nervous. Richard, what's wrong with you? Bring me the medicine. Ruth went to find the medicine in a panic. Here, she said, helping Richard take the pills. Emily sat beside Richard and asked nervously. Dad, are you all right? I'm fine, Richard answered weakly. 
Seeing that Richard seemed to have calmed down, Ruth also heaved a sigh of relief. What's the matter with you? You give me a fright. Ophelia actually sold the shares, said Richard as he leaned against the sofa with his eyes closed. What? Ruth couldn't believe it. She sold them all. Yes, said Richard weakly. Emily looked at Richard and grew afraid when she saw how old he looked. First, he was forced by that stupid Helen to sign the ownership rights over to the Hoffmans. And now Ophelia had actually sold off the only bunch of shares that could save Hillcrest and keep it in the family. When Ruth recovered her wits, she started to curse her in all sorts of ways. Richard opened his eyes. Save your energy. You guys go to the hospital first. Emily touched her belly and came to a decision. She had to take back everything they had lost from Ophelia ten times over. She would never let Ophelia get away with this. It was because of her that the Hill family had become like this. Dad, don't worry. We'll take back everything that belongs to us, said Emily. Richard held her hand. Emily, I'm sorry. This time I didn't protect you well enough. It was my incompetence that caused this. Emily's tears gushed out when she heard Richard's words. She tightly held his hand. Dad, I will always remember what you did for me. I'll always listen to you from now on. Good girl, Richard nodded. I only have you as my daughter now. Emily cried as she spoke. Well, you can bully our family either. Hearing Emily's words, Richard nodded in satisfaction. My daughter is grown up. Very good. Ruth, who was at his side, also cried. We'll definitely get better. Don't think too much about it. Maybe there's another way. We and the Hoffmans are currently tied together in this since Ophelia has betrayed us both. Richard nodded. You guys go to the hospital. Don't delay any longer. After Ruth and Emily had left, Richard picked up his phone to call Ophelia. However, Ophelia didn't pick up. This made Richard throw his phone to the side in anger. Ophelia, you're fucking me. Now we'll see what happens. Ophelia's cell phone was muted while she was in the middle of the interview. Nick looked at Ophelia's resume and asked questions from time to time. Ophelia answered them all one by one. Edgar Heyman held up his glasses. Ophelia's skills weren't bad, but he looked at her again. What did this woman have to attract Xavier, who was like a thousand-year-old ice mountain? Mr. Francis, Ophelia said. She had already finished her answer, but she still hadn't been replied to. Nick coughed to hide his embarrassment. Hmm, it's, uh, pretty good. Actually, Xavier had already secured Ophelia's position. However, he was worried that Ophelia would let it get to her head, so he decided to let her go through the motions. Miss Hill, you're quite free to work here, said Nick. Nick handed Ophelia a few folders. Make sure to familiarize yourself with the business information of these few companies. Ophelia nodded as she flipped open the document and took a look. The Sequoia Corporation. She had previously heard that this company had become an MNC and was set up in many countries. She had been expected to evolve into so many areas. What was truly surprising was the company boss's name. William. When Ophelia saw the name, she wondered where she had heard it before. Seeing that Ophelia was looking very serious, Nick probed. Do you have any other questions? No, Ophelia answered. I'll read the documents carefully later. Very good. Nick pointed to a desk in the corner. Your position is over there. I'll call you if there's anything I need, added Ophelia. It's to Nick that Ophelia wasn't a nosy person. He thought Ophelia would ask about Xavier, but she didn't. Suddenly, Ophelia stood up. Mr. Francis, can I ask you for a favor? Nick raised his eyebrows. Go ahead. Xavier said he would talk to you about collaboration today. If you go out with him today, remember to urge him to eat. I'm counting on you. Ophelia felt embarrassed to say such words. Nick was also stunned for a split second, but he quickly recovered. Even if he had ten times the guts, did he ever dare to urge his boss to eat? Mrs. Hill, this request of yours, began Nick, but he couldn't finish it. Nick's forehead was covered in lines, and he was scared out of his wits. But he said, You really don't know what Xavier does? Don't you know him at all? Ophelia was stunned. What did he mean? And why did he look suddenly afraid? Did she say something she shouldn't have?
Xavier told me before that he works at the Sequoia Corporation. Ophelia answered him softly. Indeed, but at which position? With an awkward expression on her face, Ophelia whispered, He should be about the same as you. When Nick heard this, he had a rough understanding of the whole situation. Xavier didn't tell Ophelia his real identity. He didn't tell her anything at all. Feigning a work emergency, Nick asked Ophelia to leave. As soon as she left, he got a call from Xavier, as if he'd been listening on the other end. Yes, sir, Nick answered. What's the situation like? Nick looked outside through the glass door and saw Ophelia looking at the document seriously. He then replied, I'll follow your instructions. Is she comfortable with the deal? She doesn't seem to have any complaints. However, Nick hesitated as to whether he should tell Xavier about what just happened. But Xavier was never the patient kind. He snarled. If you have something to say, then say it. Nick told Xavier about the matter that Ophelia had asked of him just now. Unexpectedly, he heard Xavier chuckle. She's just like that, said Xavier. Yes, she doesn't seem to know your true identity. The chuckle disappeared, and the tone of Xavier's voice was cooler than before. I didn't even tell her who you were, so you and the rest of the gang had better take note of what should be said and what shouldn't. Y yes replied Nick weakly. John is back in town. He'll come to see you tonight. All right, Nick nodded. Xavier called and decided to pick Ophelia up from work, just to keep things as normal as possible. When Nick saw Xavier's car, he immediately came out of his office. They nodded to each other, but said nothing more. Seeing that Ophelia's seat was empty, Xavier asked, Where is Ophelia? Nick was surprised, too. He had been busy earlier and hadn't noticed Ophelia's absence at all. She must have left, he said, sounding a little unsure. Xavier sat on Ophelia's seat and picked up her notes. It seems she had made several notes today. The computer also had the main company's webpage open. It seemed like she was really working hard. Xavier nodded in satisfaction. He said to Nick, You go on ahead. I'll wait for her here. Nick nodded and returned to his office. It seemed that his days at the company were numbered. If his boss came to pick up his wife every day, then he would definitely not feel good. When Ophelia, who had been in the bathroom all this time, came and saw Xavier sitting in her seat, she paused for a moment, pleasantly surprised. Xavier, what are you doing here? Ophelia asked. Xavier stood up. I'm taking you home. Ophelia looked at the time and realized that it was now time to get off of work. I, um, still have some documents that I haven't processed. I'm taking home and deal with it there. No. Ophelia shook her head. This is my work for the day. I have to complete it before I leave. Seeing that Ophelia was insistent, Xavier decided not to push her. Well, you go on ahead. I'll wait for you here. Are you sure? Yes, why? Is it going to be long? Xavier asked. Later, I want to take you somewhere. Ophelia shook her head. It shouldn't be too long. I'll deal with it right away. Seeing Ophelia return to work, Xavier didn't disturb her and walked directly into Nick's office. Nick was packing his things. You're leaving? Xavier said. Nick nodded, but did not give a direct answer. Xavier ignored him and walked to the sofa to sit down. Nick had no choice but to sit down in his chair as well. Xavier asked casually, How is the situation with the Hoffmans? Right now, Andrew's in charge of most of the businesses, and since Robert hasn't been involved in anything recently, the old man is helping his son behind his back. The father and son pair can be quite the team, Xavier pondered. Nick nodded. True, I'd bet on it. Have you gotten the results of the investigation you conducted previously? Nick took out a document from his drawer and handed it to Xavier. I just received this today. Your guess was right. Tyler and Robert are really in cahoots, so Tyler put in a lot of effort this time with regards to Hillcrest. Xavier looked at the information in his hand. What's the nature of the deal between them? I'm not sure. There's a big secret behind it. Xavier continued reading the file. When he turned to the next page, Xavier was a bit surprised. Damon isn't the direct heir of Robert and Helen Hoffman? No, their actual son died the day he was born, replied Nick. Robert adopted Damon as a sort of sentimental replacement. That's true. They probably regret it quite a bit. Xavier quickly finished reading the document and put it on the table. No wonder Damon hadn't received nearly as much attention in the Hoffman family all these years. It turned out he was their unwanted secret. 
Xavier, I think we should try to rope Damon in, you'd say. Xavier thought this was also a solution, but this had to be planned carefully. Otherwise, a lot of things could go wrong. Nick continued. Xavier, should I go and get in touch with Damon? Xavier shook his head. No, not now. Although Nick was puzzled, he didn't dare disobey Xavier. Xavier looked up and added, There's one more thing I need to tell you. Damon thinks that I'm you now, because he found out the villa was registered under your name. Nick nodded, unsure what he could do. He was helpless. Next time, you have to be careful. They might try and investigate you. Nick nodded. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out. I'll discuss it with John tonight. Xavier continued, have people watching the Hoffmans at all times. All right. Nick then saw Xavier's face turn warm and gentle upon looking at Ophelia. Nick was surprised to see Xavier like this. He didn't often have a soft side. When Ophelia stood up from her work, Xavier did too. Ophelia and I will be going now. All right, take care. Xavier came out of Nick's office. Is it done? He asked Ophelia. Who nodded? I must go, she added. After getting in the car, Ophelia asked, Xavier, where are you going? Xavier smiled. I'm taking you to eat something delicious. Once they had finished their meal, Xavier went to get the car, leaving Ophelia standing outside the restaurant. She thought she saw someone familiar on the opposite street and jogged onto the road into traffic without a thought for a better look. As a result, she didn't notice the car approaching. When she first heard the sound of the horn, she was startled to realize she was on the street. Unfortunately, the driver pressed the brakes right in front of her. Ophelia was slightly frightened, so she fell to the ground, gasping for breath. The driver stuck his head out and cursed loudly at Ophelia. Hey, don't you want to cross the road? If you want to die, go up somewhere else. Ophelia was still in a panic. Her face was pale as she looked at the scene in front of her. I'm sorry, she explained. Just as she was about to get up, her legs went weak, and she was about to fall down again when she was caught by someone behind her. Are you all right? asked Xavier. Ophelia nodded. I'm fine. Xavier helped Ophelia up. He glanced at the driver before helping Ophelia to the side of the road. The driver drove away without saying anything to Xavier. Xavier checked Ophelia to see if she was hurt. There were a few scrapes on her calves, but everything else was fine. His heart relaxed. Didn't I tell you to wait for me at the door? Why did you go out on the road? Xavier asked, holding Ophelia's hand tightly. His tone was serious, but he looked nervous. Ophelia looked at Xavier's nervous expression and said, Sorry to make you worry. What's going on? Xavier also knew that Ophelia wasn't the kind of person who would easily run into the street. Ophelia said, I just saw Jane's husband, Harris, pushing a woman into a hotel across the street. Xavier replied, so you wanted to know if it was him. Ophelia nodded, a little worried. Recently, because of everything that was happening in her life, she had neglected to inquire about Jane. That was why she had suddenly become so anxious. Xavier was unconcerned about Jane or her husband. He was angry that Ophelia would cause an accident over somebody else's trivial matters. He felt stupid, too. He wanted to have a meal alone with her, so he had specifically instructed Aiden and the others not to follow. He wouldn't make that mistake again. Are you angry? Ophelia also noticed Xavier's expression. You really don't know how to take care of yourself. Tell me, what would I do if I lost you? Xavier asked, frowning. Ophelia lowered her head and whispered, When Xavier heard this, his heart faltered. He took Ophelia in his arms. This was the first time he had gotten angry with her. He had never done so before. Today's emotional reaction was a bit much, even for him. Xavier hugged Ophelia tightly. Perhaps this was the only way to ease his anger. Ophelia also reached out to hug Xavier. I promise I'll pay attention next time. Xavier kissed her forehead. Let's go home. When Ophelia went to take a bath, Xavier called Aiden over. Go and check on Jane Stewart's current condition, he said. Who is that? asked Aiden. A good friend of Ophelia's, Xavier answered. Aiden nodded. All right. Xavier waved his hand to tell Aiden to leave. He looked at the documents on his table and started his work. A little while later, Norris called Xavier. Grandfather, said Xavier. How is it going? Everything is as planned, Xavier answered. Good, 
answered Nora. I haven't been paying much attention to you since your grandmother came home recently. You will have to do everything yourself. Your grandmother and I are waiting for the day we come to New York. When Xavier heard that his grandmother was home, he smiled. This was excellent news. All right, I hope she's doing well, Xavier added. You let me worry about her. You just do what you're told, Nora said. Xavier nodded, expecting to end the call. Suddenly, Norris added, I almost forgot one thing. What is it? I'll send Ella to New York so that she can help you too. You should be there in a few days. Xavier frowned. Grandfather, I don't need her help. I can take care of things on my own. Norris ignored him. Xavier, there are some things that women can do with half the effort and achieve twice the result. Ella will do her best. Give her a chance. Xavier didn't want Ella to come at all. When the time came, not only would she be unable to help, she might even become a burden. Grandpa, he began. Norris had already hung up. Presumably, he didn't want to give Xavier a chance to argue. Xavier put down his phone. He suddenly felt that there was a big problem in his life right now. Xavier? Ophelia called out softly from the study door, as if she was worried it would affect his work. Xavier looked at her. What's wrong? Ophelia smiled. I drew you a bath. Xavier nodded, a little relieved. I'll be right there, he said, smiling. Once Ophelia left, Xavier's gaze fell on his phone once again, and his eyes turned slightly cold. He had to think of a way to deal with Ella. When Xavier came out of the bed later, he saw Ophelia sleeping on the bed with a stack of documents in her arms. Xavier walked over quietly, took the documents from her hands, and helped her lie down. He turned around and glanced at the documents, which were marked with a colored pen. It was open to the introduction he had written as the head of the Sequoia Company. Based on Ophelia's notes, it had seemed that she admired what her new boss had written. Xavier felt a weird emotion course through his body. He smiled. He didn't know whether he was happy or not. His wife had expressed reverence for a man she had never met. Even though it was him, he still felt inexplicably happy. How confusing. Was he jealous of himself? With a sigh, Xavier bent down and kissed Ophelia's forehead. Good night, my love. He whispered softly to her and lay down by her side. He reached out and pulled Ophelia gently into his arms. Soon, he was blissfully asleep. I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episodes. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.